Hi everyone, I am Jonathan J. Reinhardt, host and owner of War Gaming Recon, and I'm coming at you today with another unboxing video. So this is part of our Dwarven Forge series. We've gotten a bunch of Dwarven Forge, courtesy of Stefan Pacorni, who's owner, founder, and head honcho over at Dwarven Forge. He sent this to us for review. So thank you very much, Stefan, for this. And I want to say Stefan's going to be on the podcast. That's right, we do an audio podcast. It comes out every other week. You can get that by going to wargamingrecon.com. You can also get it by going to any place that podcasts can be found, Apple Podcasts, you can get it on Stitcher, it's on Android, iOS, you listen to their website, whatever, it's everywhere. So we've done some other videos here about this. We did one where we opened up the big box and we said, hey, look at all this stuff. And then we've done another one that focused on the cottage set for the Tudor style, including the Tudor ruins, which are pretty cool. And now we're going to be looking at something else. We're going to be looking at the cottage set for the stone style and also the stone ruins. So price point for the stone house is the same as it is for the other one, for the Tudor set. But the ruins are cheaper. The Tudor ruins are like 79 bucks, And these are like 50 52 I believe. So you can double check me by going to dwarvenforge.com. They have full pricing there. This came about from their city builder Kickstarter, which is a very successful raise, like two and a half million, three million dollars. But you can still buy them. You can buy them from their website, dwarvenforge.com, and get that. We'll have a link, obviously, below in the description. So we're going to just open this up and see what this looks like. If you've seen the other video with the Tudor style house, you know it was already open, and that's because my toddler, my two and a half year old daughter, got into it and we've been playing with it. I'll talk a little bit about that in the video. But First, before we open, you got to get your tools, box cutter, and so forth. And if you're a little one, if you're a kid, you need a grown-up with you, okay? So don't go playing with these by yourselves. And if you're a grown-up or you're a grown-up like me who's challenged when it comes to sharp objects, you want to be extra careful, okay? So we're just going to open it up. We'll dive in, and let's bring you guys a little bit closer to the action here on my table. Let's start with this box. Just get a picture of what's on it. We'll dive right in. To be very careful not to cut myself because I'm a klutz. You probably are not, so you probably don't have these issues, which are great. But if you're like me, just be careful, especially if you're doing video. No one wants to see you cut yourself on it. So you get a nice thank you from Stefan. You've seen that before. And all this stuff is nicely packed, individually wrapped. Let's dump it out. And that's something you can do. You can dump it out because it's made out of Dwarvenite. Dwarvenite's a very special plastic that Stefan's helped to create. His original sets were in resin. You can still get them. His stuff is intended for things like D&D, role-playing games, Pathfinder, uh, Call of Cthulhu, any of that kind of stuff. Whereas these, and he actually sent these because he thought that maybe we get some use here for Wargaming. So... Like the other set, if you've seen, I'm not going to keep on referring to it. I don't want to bore you. You get a floor. We did get the painted one, which costs more. You get the roof. Nice stone style, beautifully painted. There's some moss and lichen on the roof. You get a nice little loft area here. You notice how the stone's done in his traditional pattern over there that Stefan does, where some are like light brown and so forth. The walls. Now, I think the stone is one that you can afford to get the cheaper one, the unpainted, just kind of a, a dwarven gray, I think he refers to it. Then paint it yourself. The Tudor one's a little more daunting. These were a little stuck together, but that's okay. Roof and walls, so get two walls with windows in them, one solid wall, a wall with a door that opens either way, which I like because it's modular, and you get four of these posts. Let's see if you get a nice view of that. So there's four of those. And it's super easy to assemble. So you take the floor right here. You can see it has four posts, holes. So the posts go into it. And also, I don't know if you can tell, but here, rubber on the corner. So that helps to keep it non-skid. Now my playing surface right here, I get a cigar box battle mat. It's beautiful. And it's not going to move around. But if you're just on a plane to kitchen table, which you could do when you're playing on the floor, get wood floors or whatever. It might move around a little. So it's great that they put those on here so it doesn't. And these floors are modular. So if you had multiple of these, you could just build them up one on top of another and it won't skid. 
So you, you get your base. Right, so we got our base right here. I'm gonna put the posts in. No, in the tutor set, these posts, you can clearly tell they were metal. And these are too, but these look like they painted. Or they might actually be some of the Dwarven Knight. It's a little tricky to get them in the first time because it's very tight fit, which is good. But you just, you get all the posts in, like such. We're doing a quick build here for you. Doesn't matter what post you put where. You can put as many as you want in. But of course, if you want it to be like a pretty standard house, you're going to put all four posts in because a home has four posts, right? It's a little give in it. It's a little flexible. It's because of the material. I'll talk about that in a minute. And again, it doesn't matter which one you put in. You can put it in like this. You can put it in like that. They basically the same. Top is painted. Bottom is plain gray, so you know where the bottom should go. And this is a little tight, but this fits really good. If you saw the Tudor House video, you know I talked about fit and how it was a little loose. And it could be because that one my daughter and I have played with a bit, so it loosened up. But this fit is gorgeous. Or it could just be set by set, you never know. And that's one complaint people have had, and I'm going to echo. You just don't know what the fit's going to be like. And you want a nice tight fit. You want to be able to do this. And oh look, one piece fell up, but most of them didn't. So you want to be able to do this. You want to be able to take it, right, and lift it up. Um, how often are you going to be doing this? I don't know. But you want to be able to do that. One thing you could do, you can squeeze it a little bit. So if you squeeze the size just a bit, you get some tension in the wall. Roof, like such. Get your house. Like the other one, there's a little bit of buildup because it's supposed to go with the streets, which we'll show you in another video. This roof is also, just take something from a different set. These are from the Tudor ruin set, so you can put flames in. The stone one doesn't have it. And the roof is magnetic, as my two and a half year old showed me with the other one. So you get that, you can do as such. Now let's open up the actual ruins for this. Not as many pieces as you get in the Tudor one for the ruins, which is why this one costs a little bit less. But it is stone, just like this whole cottage is. And so we'll just open that up. The same thing, a thank you from Stefan. And a buttload of, look at this, just all these ruins. And again, everything's in plastic baggies, individually wrapped. So we're going to take this out. Let me see. So it's nice that it's individually wrapped, but geez, it's a lot of plastic. A lot, a lot of plastic. A lot of things to take out and open. And motto and moral of this story is if you're doing this for the first time and you're going to have a game going on, right? You're going to have people coming over to play and you have finishing setup to do. Don't be doing this when everyone's there. Do this in advance, okay? Because, oh my goodness, look at this. It's great because you get all this stuff. Look at all of this stuff. But, like, oh my goodness, it's just so many baggies. Stefan, you're getting so much value here. Tons and tons and tons. And I thought the value was great in the Tudor one because you get the flames and everything and all the other stuff. But there's, there's more pieces here. More. I didn't think that was possible. I looked at the listing. And, of course, I didn't check the quantity of it or anything. But I was just like... Oh, there's only like six different types of pieces here. Uh, four different pipes. But you get like six of two different types. You get four of another type. And this is cool, actually. And I'll show you in a minute once I finish opening all these baggies. Oh, my goodness, Stefan. This is wonderful, but what a thing to have to do. And, of course, if you're anything like me, you're going to want to put them back in the baggies to keep them... Nice and safe. Since these are the new Dwarven Knight, as opposed to the resin, you don't have to worry about them chipping as much. They just... Like, my toddler dropped the Tudor house down on the floor running around and not a scuff on it. So we get a lot of pieces here. Let's knoll a little bit and just separate out some of the light pieces. Okay. So we got floors. Bam. Three floors. That's great. We got our little partial walls. We got our 
other wall segments rubble oh, what else we got there's just there's so much of this i can't stefan i can't take it you just you've done a lot of value here a lot a lot of value and i know i've said that but it is 100 percent true and i know some people knock dwarven forge because of the price i gotta tell you i looked at it and i was like oh man I, it looks gorgeous because they had a new kickstarter for a dungeon of doom and i really wanted to back it and money was a little tight i was like i'm gonna back and i have to back paint because i'm not gonna do unpainted and i don't have the money for painted because like i was like so much but worth every penny so we've done a little bit of nolan here anyone who does legos will be aware of that so we'll just kind of fly you in okay so you can see all the pieces here. Uh, I want to just show you a couple things that I've learned. So you can take a wall, and these are ruins, and you can put them together. You can swap them around. And then you can put that inside your empty area here. You can use this with or without another area. And you basically are able to fill it up to create a breakout wall put this together they are upside down but they they do fit i assure you so look i get that together it's all ruined pieces let's say you get a bad guy in here your hidden troops the snipers or whatever um you do modern war there's explosives you're gonna blow the wall bam whole wall comes out maybe just part of the wall comes out so you end up with this right here the um, explosions didn't take. So you get part of it, you get battle damage, which I love in video games, right? So you get some openings here for battle damage. Maybe it's the other way around. So maybe this is what you got. So you can get extra play out of it. You can put this by itself on the table. Just for a wall. Say so you just need part of a wall. Bam. You turn it around. Different part of a wall. So you get a little extra play with that. You get some rubble you can just put out, you can put in the building. Let's say you have want to create a ruined floor here. Then you can even add stuff up here. You can put a corner post. And then, oh look, I can add another floor. Maybe I need another um, floor. just because that long side. So with an add-on set and the core set, I basically have made a three-story building here. And you can even do like such, if you want it to be really rickety. That's a little, you can build up some more. As long as you're not putting models that are super heavy on it, I honestly think you're fine. I mean, eventually it gets a little too precarious. But you get the idea. Look, this has just been blown to some of the rings. And this doesn't come with a damaged roof, but the idea is you just use the roof you got. And of course, you get battle damage, or you build up as appropriate. You get your flames on it, you get flames in the windows. This set is great. I would highly, highly recommend, even if you don't want the buildings and stuff buy the stone ruins because this would be great for world war ii be great for world war one you can use it for western europe anyway you can use it for north america you can use it for saga vikings it's basically timeless just for this get it painted you can do unpainted save some money it goes together and it's just it's a great set looks really good worth every penny i thought i would love the tutor set more than this because like it's a stone house big deal but this i think is even better and then you can actually mix and match. So let's take my tutor set here. And maybe you've got, I don't know, like a weird house. They, they built stone on the floor, but then they've added up another level. <coughs> so obviously you might want to use one that you can actually go between, but you just, they ran out of material, so they had to use wood. And they built this tutor style house. You can see here the metal pegs. And just to quickly show you 
a little idea. And then maybe the wooden part of the house broke down. So you got this two-story building, and the wooden part is gone. And so you are end up with something a little crazy. Maybe they add a little bit of wood, um, stone, I don't know. So you get this going, combination of materials. So you can mix and match. There's one thing I like about it. So anyway, that is the Dwarven Forge cottage stone house and ruins look at all this stuff jeez that's a lot of stuff i just i can't get over it uh i think you for extra playability you might want to just do like say at base get the stone ruins and the tudor ruins because you get the nice flames which are pretty cool you can get a lot of playability out of it and then the houses are great the durable look i'm knocking this stuff down and no damage that's try doing that with anything else Miniature building authority. You try to do almost any other piece of terrain as a war gamer, and you do this, bam, you're gonna get chips on it. Something's gonna break. You're gonna have to repaint something. You're gonna have to re-glue something, reflock, whatever. You don't have to. Dorm Forge is so durable. It is toddler safe. So thank you very much for watching this video here from Wargaming Recon. And we're gonna have other videos for this Dwarven Forge series because we do a lot of other unboxing videos and everything else. So you can check more in the description below. Be sure to subscribe below. Click on that button so you can get the notifications and like the videos, see what else we do. We have a whole lot of unboxing that we do. And we have all the videos to come up. Plus, we get the audio podcast that comes out every other week. And you can get that by going to wargamingrecon.com. Link in the description below. We'll have links to Dwarven Forge. And there might be links to other products that we think would work great with this. And some of those might be affiliate links. But just know that they help to support the show and keep us going on the air. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen and watch this video here. I am Jonathan J. Reinhardt, and you know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much fun you're having with some Dwarven Forge, it's gorgeous. You know you have to. you got to. You need to. Keep on gaming.